becomes the name of the product. And you're like, hold on, I'm confused. Let me give you an example. So when you go and you grab a tissue, what is the word that you use when you grab that tissue? What's the, what's the name of it? Kleenex. I'm going to grab a Kleenex. Well, you're grabbing a tissue, but the brand name itself is Kleenex. But we call it Kleenex. We call all tissues Kleenex. Oh, can you grab me a Kleenex? Can you grab me a Kleenex? You don't know, go and grab, you know, the, the tissue and be like, actually, it's, I don't know, Project Source or something, some random, like, you know, generic brand. You don't see that. You just grab the stinking tissue and you hand it to him because you go, oh, Kleenex in my eyes is the tissue because it's called reification. Where we've given a new identity to tissue by calling it Kleenex. Let me give you a couple else uh, examples. When you see a dumpster, you know those big, large garbage bins behind usually, you know, you know, big residents or um, restaurants, right? That big thing, we call it a dumpster. The dumpster is literally just the name brand of a type of garbage that they have out there, the commercial garbage can. But we call it a dumpster. It is so well in our head that we go, well, what else would you call it? Like, what else do you call a tissue, <laughs> right? The reification is that because this is such a well-known brand name that we now call them all dumpsters, even though they're not all technically dumpsters because they are garbage bins, but not all of them are actually the name brand of a dumpster. Just like Saran Wrap. Saran Wrap is not the plastic. Saran Wrap is the name of the company, but we call all things that are plastic covering, you know, the and you stick it to the thing. <laughs> that plastic wrap is actually not called, this plastic part is not saran wrap. That's just the product name. All right. Just like Coke uh, and Pepsi are product names of cola. All right. And just like Pop Tarts are the name brand of toaster pastries. Okay. So Jell-O's the same thing. Not all Jell-O's, all gelatins are Jell-O. But we do that. We'll shake it up. I'm like, oh, would you like some Jello? Well, it's not Jello. It's not Jello. It's some other, you know, off-brand. I don't know, Annie O or something. Okay. And band-aids. Band-aids are not the bandages. It's band-aid is the name of the company. But we call all bandages band-aids because of da da reification. Okay. All right. Same things with Pampers. Pampers is another one like, oh, go get the Pampers or the diapers or whatever. Pampers is another kind of thing where we've, you know, a reification of what the actual diaper is. Okay, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, we do this with just about everything. We like to give it a new name so that we would like to uh, <laughs> not admit to the thing that we're really buying. Let me explain this in a sense when we talk about escargot. All right, anyone know what escargot is? Escargot is snail. So a lot of times you'll go into France. I don't know if y'all been to France, but you go there and you go, I would like some escargot, please. I don't know how to say please in French right now. My brain hurts. <laughs> I've recorded this too many times to remember what I said before, right? But you're really just asking for snails. Okay, that's what we're doing here. Uh, goose liver or pâté. All right, so your actually pâté is your goose liver. Can I have some sturgeon eggs? You mean caviar? All right. Or I want some sneakers. You mean Jordans? Right? Do you see how they go back and forth? Watch being a Rolex. Ta-da! So we actually hone into these name brands because of the connotation that it brings, because of what we, we think of when we hear these products. Okay. All right. So we also think about um, languages being more weighted. Certain words are more weighted than others. Here's an example. Are you giving your child a swat or a slap? All right. Is it a spanking or a beating? As a kid, I'm pretty sure my dad maybe spanked me like one time. It was like a boot. It wasn't like that big of a deal. But here's me. It was a beating. It was a beating. It was such a beating. It was never a beating. But <laughs> words have a lot of weight. If I told my teacher my father beat me, my God, you know, like not good stuff. Okay. Um, so words have weight. Be mindful of that. So question is, am I a professor or am I an instructor? Hmm, good question to know. Figure it out. <laughs> All right. So are you going to college or just community college?
College. Uh, I must tell you, Butte College is incredible. And trust me, I've taught at Chico State. I'm teaching at Butte. Both are fantastic, but I'm telling you, Butte College is incredible. So don't never ever say, being here at Butte, you're just in community college, because that is a garbage statement. We have an incredible amount of great teachers through this college that, I mean, it's a good, it's very impressive. And again, I told you I taught over at Chico State, so uh, definitely not just anything here at Butte College. So I stand by that. I totally believe it. I see it just anyway. So keep that in mind. You know, are you just in college? You know, just community college? Or are you in college? Uh, FYI, you are in college. And how do you know? Because I let you know <laughs> with your grades and how we learn in this class. All right. Okay. So advertisers, advertisers and politicians, they know this. They utilize this to the best of their abilities to get you to do the thing that they want you to do. It just is what it is. It's called capitalism, y'all. We can just live with it, okay? So, uh, we use these terms in all kinds of different ways, like make America great again. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I have absolutely no idea what that even means. But a lot of people just swear by it like it's, you know, a thing. So, I don't understand it. Some of you might all. But that is what people do. And now they hold on to these slogans and these lines and they go, yes, that's the thing. I'm going to do this. Because somebody of power said it. So we're going to talk really quickly about appeal to authority. Unfortunately, we love titles. We love that somebody is a doctor, that they are a president, that they are a lawyer, that they are a scientist, that they are a professor. They love this. I love this, right? I don't know. I like a title too, right? I better, better than just being Colleen. Okay. All right. So we, and that's okay. It's just human nature to want to see something and look at it and go, it's telling me what to do. Okay. I feel better now. I feel better now because I'm listening to that. That's just how we are. That's how we work. We're all human. It is what it is. So the question is, are we utilizing this title to help us out? So here, let me, let me rephrase this. So if the president does it, it must be right. Right? So because of the title, we follow suit. So their language and their dialogue is really important because we hold a lot of weight on who a president is. Okay? So like a policeman. So a policeman did it. It must be right because we hold, you know, they, they have values and they have this. So when they do something, we look at it like it must be right. That's not always the case. All right? The same as a professor and a scientist. I've said this before. Unfortunately, where's the money coming from? you know and what's the what's the motive behind it why would somebody do this say this thing or however because sometimes there's something behind it okay there's there's sometimes a thing behind it you know there ain't money behind what i'm saying because i don't i'm a teacher <laughs> i am not sponsored so <laughs> i say the things that i know to be true based on the facts that i see okay so that's for me in my degree you could say okay well she says it because this is her research this is her information all right we could probably say it's pretty pretty legit all right what are other people saying remember compare with the peers what's really going on okay that is appeal to authority sometimes it's okay sometimes we really have to be mindful of the ways in which somebody is using said title to tell us things all right so whether it's a i don't know a pastor, a scientist, uh, you know, Mr. Pillow, my pillow guy. Is he a thing? I don't know. You know, there's always somebody out there, the 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 guy, the guy who rings the thing out. What is that called? Yes, that. Anyway, so we have all these different people that we we give authority to and we listen to because we have so much respect. But we have to be careful and we have to look beyond that and really consider it. Okay? Just a little heads up. All right, so one thing we need to differentiate is that the, the, we have to differenti differentiate the word from the thing, okay? So here's, here's the thing. I could yell, fire, 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 fire in a theater, and that's illegal, actually. You're not supposed to do that, um, especially if there's no fire, right? So if there's no fire, what's wrong with that? Well, the word from the thing is totally different. So, yeah, I did say fire. What well, fire is not that big of a word. Like, why would I get in trouble for that? It's the intention behind it, okay? So, one, it's a 
it's a lie and it creates a lot of chaos and safety issues and havoc and everyone's trying to stumble out and get out of this theater so yeah of course there's a huge weight behind the thing versus the word so when you're screaming fire in a theater like that's incredibly you know ridiculous you're not supposed to be doing that so yeah i would freak out so i don't go to movie theaters i get anxiety anywho <laughs> okay so here's another one why can't i joke about a bomb in an airport it was just a word it was just a word huh i see people who try and use that as an argument very much it was just a word i was just seeing a word so i wasn't really doing anything yeah but what was the intention behind it right what was the the thing you were really trying to do okay so we really have to be let's be honest with ourselves about the things that we're seeing and that we're doing and that's the whole point of this little <laughs> this little lecture here okay um so here's one if i take your essay and i go and i put a big old f on it does that change the quality of your paper all right so we have authority here one that i've been doing this a very long time and i see a lot of papers come through you know the question is does that f hold value you know does it take the quality away from your paper that depends what were the qualifications i was looking for in the paper right was it you know please write about dinosaurs and you write about jello then it has absolutely no relation to anything we're talking about that might be an f i don't know i don't usually give f's <laughs> it's hard to get an f in college if you just read the directions so i don't know so anyway um that's the question you know does you know does my f change the quality of your paper okay and uh one weird one i don't know why this is on there i can't remember why i put this but um say a person is constantly calling your kid a spoiled brat you know words have a lot of weight to them and the things that we say it may not be the word spoiled brat but it might be what it does to like the kids like my dad used to tell me and my brothers that we are heathens <laughs> you're a bunch of heathens because you guys fight all the time yeah we fought a lot so i don't know i didn't even really know what the word heathen was i got older i was like oh that was mean dad <laughs> it's like well you guys fought all the time i didn't know what else to say you know and for a long time you know that kind of i held on to that i was like a heathen am i going to hell because i fought with my brother ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters fight we're just too close in age and we love each other just enough to hate each other right so anyway so words have a lot of weight so it's important to be careful of the thing the word versus the thing so while my dad might have said you little heathens his intention he wouldn't think any much about the word itself but it was the way you know he went about it how he said it you know so for me he might not have realized what he did but for me it really hurt i mean i didn't really that hurt but <laughs> maybe somebody somewhere would have been really hurt by that so as a note language does not always have to be a conflict you know these words don't always have to be an issue okay it is very important that we understand the other side absolutely that's the whole point that's why we communicate to understand the other side okay so one thing that i, I mentioned earlier is i love rap and i love rap because i feel like there's these great ways of using words in a new creative way that you didn't use before you know and i love that um i find that fascinating new creating new words that we can actually use is amazing except i swear to god i hate the word selfie i hate that word i hate it i hate it it drives me nuts because majority of the time when people are using it they aren't using it right selfie is when you've taking a picture of yourself right not when it's a group of you and someone took a picture of you i can't tell you how many times people have used that word incorrectly it drives me nuts i hate that word anywho end of that rant <laughs> okay so um again words don't have to be bad they can be great ways of expressing things that were previously inexpressible or just not easily expressible so sometimes we use words from other languages and vice versa because their word is the word and we can't think of something better let's just be honest so like the french actually don't have a word for the weekend so they use ours i don't know maybe they never had to worry about a weekend you know america was working so stinking hard <laughs> that we have to have some days off all right uh maybe french never had to worry about it because they were always you know enjoying life i don't know i have no idea never lived in france so anyway so they don't have a word they use uh the english version weekend so vice versa we use the word deja vu and uh 
je ne sais quoi, je ne sais quoi right? There's these words that some cultures have that were like, I don't, I don't have a better way of saying this. And in some ways, sometimes things get lost in translation. Like if you have something that's, you know, like a, like a Spanish song. I remember once I had a, a Spanish teacher, she's the song she was trying to translate for us. And she just stopped and she goes, I can't translate it because it got lost in translation. Like what, what it means in, in my language just doesn't equate in the English language. All right. And, and vice versa sometimes, you know. So I guess it's like sometimes these languages, these words, um, you know, they're just so they just so good just in their own form. It's hard to do something more with it. OK, so like deja vu. We do not in the English language have a way of expressing it in you know, in such a simpler form. All right. So. Words are constantly invented. I'm telling you, again, Bill Bryson's Made in America is a fantastic book. I highly suggest reading it because it's a great way of going, I never thought of that. It's so wild when you start to see the way words are made. That's the point of it, Made in America, all the words that were created in the American language. They also talk about Shakespeare and all the different words that Shakespeare came up with. I could swear Elbow was one of them. I could swear elbow was one. I could be wrong. I got to get the book. It's over there in the corner. I don't care that much. So anyway, um, a lot of times we use words to fill in the gaps again, like highway. We didn't have a word for highway before a highway was built. So we had to make up the word fast food. I know I keep bringing these up, but that's like the different things. So um, the word whatever, we didn't have a word that was in between this. So we were like, whatever. <laughs> Right, so we come up with these different ways to express something because we don't have another word, like bromance, right? I love that word. It's like, oh, bromance, got it. Oh, I get it. It's a friendship, but it's it's bigger than that. It's these, it's it's a friendship that's it's hard to express, so bromance works for it. Or friend zone, right? Like when you're in the friend zone, you're like, I don't know how to explain that this is never going to happen between me and so-and-so. I'm just in the friend zone. And we all now have an understanding in a, in a connotation that we know what that means when someone says it okay um, again read the book made in America it is a great it's a great book it's kind of hard to get into but once you get there you're like ah oh, gotcha okay isn't it true that sometimes we get the meaning wrong all right so there's many times where we actually do get the meaning wrong <laughs> when, when, uh, and you guys notice, and I, I do get that a lot, especially in this particular class, it just happens because we think it means one thing when it really means another, especially when we're talking about value assumptions and reality assumptions. We kept honing in on this word assumption, but it was actually the value and the reality that we were really, really wanted to get an essence of. The assumption part was just the, the next point, right? So when we talked about value assumptions, we were talking about um, what we hold true, what we value, what we assume in our own world, what we value. And remember how assumptions come about between family and friends and the ways in which we grew up and that's how we have our values or our value assumptions or reality assumptions. How, you know, we have certain things that we believe to be true. We think this is reality based on our assumptions or based on what we've experienced in life. Like when we talk about um, 12 Angry Men, one of the biggest reality assumptions is that because the kid was from the slums, he was going to be a criminal. Well, that's not the case, but it was a reality assumption. It was not real. It was an assumption, but it was their reality. That's the whole thing I was trying to pull away from. It's, it's kind of hard because I saw where a lot of you were going and I had to go through and say, no, that's not quite what I was going for. So hopefully that helps you understand. We talk about reality, not within just that small situation, but reality as a whole, how we live our lives and how we see things. Okay. So, uh, vagueness. So some of our terms are vagueness, ambiguity, double speak and weasel words. I don't really talk too much about weasel words, but I'll explain to you exactly what those are. So vagueness. It's unclear. It's very vague. It's too abstract. Remember, we talk about love. It's very abstract and it's very unspecific. So when it's really vague, you really can't get a grasp on what are you trying to tell me? That's the whole point. That's why that's why vagueness is vagueness, because you can't you don't have anything concrete to hold on to and really say, what the fuck are you saying? All right. So why? Why are people vague? Well, they don't want to be specific. They don't, they want to be abstract. They want you to just kind of think, 
uh, whatever you want to think, but it, they don't tell you the real thing. So politicians obviously do this all the time. And I don't mean to pick on politicians. I have no problem with politicians at all. I, I think politicians are politicians for reasons. And that's just, that's the name of the game. And that's okay. It's not a bad thing. It's what our, um, you know, America is built on. I say this so that you don't think I'm picking on politicians. That's not my, that's not my, my gig here. All right. So politicians do this all the time in speeches to avoid being pinned down on something. And so they, they say a lot of vagueness so that later on they can't go, well, you said this. Like, well, that's not really what I meant. So an example would be, I will do all I can to help those who most need it in our society. Who the fuck are you talking about, brah? Like, <laughs> narrow this down a little bit. Like, I will do all I can. Well, what are you going to do? To help all those who need who? The most in our society. What? Right? So that could be anything. He could say who need it most. Maybe he's talking about the rich. Maybe the rich need it the most because they're taxed so much. I don't know. We don't know because it's incredibly vague. So whatever they do after that, they can't be held accountable because they didn't really say anything at all. Of course, right? And doctors, sometimes doctors will do this too because they really don't know how to tell you ah, that you're dying, right? So you would say, the doctor might say, you know, let's let's talk about ways to make you comfortable. All right, let's, you got, you don't have very much time left. How can we make you more comfortable? And the reality is you're dying. Right. So never like to hear it. It does happen. My mom actually had to go. Well, my mom did die, but it was kind of the same thing. It was like, well, how can we make you more comfortable in this journey that you will be going on? It's like, oh, all right. So they don't want to make promises and predictions. And I'm, I'm, I appreciate and respect that. They said to my mother, you know, three months to three years and she got the full three years so I, I do appreciate that but at times they're just like we don't want to make a promise we can't keep because you know that's hard that's a hard thing to do I don't know how people are doctors that's incredible incredible feats all right so think about when you go to break up with somebody it's not you it's me you know they don't really want to say the thing they want to say when in actuality it really is you it's not me I just don't like you anymore I'm sorry it happens sometimes I'm gonna move on that's brutal, but that's the truth. <laughs> all right. They don't want to hurt someone's feelings. All right. I don't know which hurts worse, <laughs> the vagueness or the truth. Sometimes the truth makes it a lot easier to get over somebody. Just as a heads up, if you're breaking up with someone, maybe don't take that to heart. But I don't know. I'm kind of like, yeah, you probably should have just told me the truth. and would have made it a lot easier for me to get over you. <laughs> all right. So another thing people say is you're in good hands. You're in good hands through all state. Aha, uh -huh, right? You hear that so many times, it kind of stuck in your brain. Advertisers like to make it sound good without promising anything specific. You're in good hands. We're not going to tell you what's going to happen to you, but you're in good hands. We got you here. Okay? Very well played. Very well played, advertisers. All right, so ambiguity completely differs from vagueness. All right? Do not use them as synonyms. Don't use them in the same way. Vagueness, we just talked about that. We're going to go into ambiguity totally different so ambiguity uh in our book two ninety-three. let me grab it oops that's not it yeah. oh it's right in front of me oh save me from myself 293 why do i feel like that is the wrong i think it's page 93 hmm, 293 There was one of these things on here that I actually used the wrong page number, so forgive me if this is it. 